Hey there, I just wanted to run you through the conversion that we did for the powder magazine sample. And uh, to get started on the right, I have the original document as screenshots. So we're looking at a statically designed InDesign document where um, everything we see on the screen has an absolute position and was designed to work on exactly that device size but it wouldn't reflow. Um, and that was the challenge that we took up to, to make this a responsive design that should ultimately work on all devices while also providing interactive features like video, sliders, and so forth. Um, if we run through the original document, we can see a cover page. There is a introduction or tutorial page uh, the next one is a table of contents page, which has a relatively complex layout. Um, the next one is a um, main feature article featuring a lot of uh, images, some biography. Um, the next page we had a look at was again another article. This one had some additional features like tables, um, blending images. And yeah, so we took that content into Typeloft. So with the source files available, uh, we did get a hold of the images um, and we brought that into our editor. And I just want to briefly show the overall structure. Um, we've created everything using the widgets that we have available in our editor. And um, we've built it now in a way that this will work on both mobile and tablet and also on the different orientations. So if I switch to mobile, we can see that um, the text is still readable. Um, however, the layout shifts and it uses, best uses the um, screen that's available. Going to the next page, the navigation here, um, we've used our editor to make it both horizontal and vertical in appearance. So on a um, portrait phone, we can see that the instructions are um, vertical. And if I switch over to a tablet, we can see that they go in two columns where it's still very easy to read. Uh, on to the next page, um, the table of contents, we did add some effects to, to blend in from the sides. Um, content will fade in as users scroll through. So that also is very visible on a landscape orientation. And by clicking on the images or titles, I can go directly to that page. So this will now also work on all devices. We are using the vertical layout here on all devices, which I think still looks okay. It would be possible to also have a variation where this would be horizontal. Um, the next page is the first article. And this is maybe the first real page where um, the responsiveness of, of our editor comes through nicely. So as we can see here, um, we are using the full available size and going to phone, we keep all of that intact. And even on landscape, we can see that we use um, a relevant portion of the imagery. Uh, we still have the text available, scroll available. So regardless of what device we're on, this would be the expanded, uh, we'll always make sure that we cover the full page. And then scrolling down, we have um, a good layout to present all the images so they are in a, in a relevant size and again automatically adjusting to phone sizes for example now for the next ones i do want to switch over to more of a device preview um, so let me just open up again the original and then i have the phone and tablet so it might be a bit easier to look at it side by side and um, here by looking at it you can maybe better see how the design is adopting. Uh, this is now a single issue that was created in our editor and all the layouting and sizing is, is really just set up in our editor. And that's relatively easy to do. Um, so going through it once more real quick, we got table of contents, which now appear nicely on all device sizes. Do consider the phone might be a little bit smaller. So we made sure maybe I leave it like this. You can see that even if we switch through different devices, the text should always be readable. Um, the next page, saw already. Now this one is also a page that shows the 
um, how effective it is to use um, a responsive layer. So we really don't rely on the device size anymore. We can see the insights text is bound to the bottom left, the scroll is bound to the bottom right, and the image, we just specify which area we're interested in. So now rotating the device here, um, we'll see that we still use a um, very suitable part of the imagery, same on tablet. And uh, this would even work on a um, television, for example. So also upwards to, to larger device sizes or kiosk or other sorts, uh, this would always adjust. So scrolling down a little, um, there's also a slight difference what we've set up in Typeloft. We are using columns here. So you can see that um, on the tablet, we get two columns where on the phone, it collapses into one. And this is really all about um, readability. We want to make sure text is big enough to read on a phone while also leveraging the possibilities we have with a tablet or larger screen to present columns and make the layout a little more interesting. Further down, we do see a table with, a, with an image blending in. So that's all quite easy to do as well. Um, another paragraph with columns that change depending on device size. And then um, we have a couple of, of slider effects on this page as well, which users can browse through. This is um, There's not a lot of slides in there, so it's relatively simple, but we can also use that for um, any images, for example, for a portfolio to slide through. We have different transitions available. And uh, this is also set up to collapse into a single column on the phone. On a tablet, this might still be big enough. And then going down, we are very fond of the parallax effect. As you can see, the image is moving slowly relative to the scroll. Uh, it's a very subtle effect. And depending on what magazine um, you are doing, um, sometimes you don't want to overwhelm um, your readers with too many effects and everything moving around. The parallax effect is quite a um, an easy to digest effect. So it just usually adds a little bit of um, a third dimension to your pages and makes it a bit more appetizing and interesting. And then further down, you might have noticed that we did set up some fade effects for some of the images, fade and move. Those are subtle things that um, we encourage our publishers to enable. Uh, but again, the idea is not to overdo it. We still want to have um, a, a calm reading experience. And uh, the next page, also here, we can see that the text is readable both on tablet and phone. Um, use images here. Image layouts in a grid work fine as well. We could also make this in a way that on a phone, those would be collapsing underneath each other. Then the images would be more visible. But we also have a way to make them tappable. So if a user on a phone taps on any image that's seemingly too small, he would get the full size view. And further down, what we see here is a um, advertisement video. So those can be embedded or added via YouTube. Um, they will just stay set to autoplay and the music will start as soon as the user goes in. You can set it up so that it starts from the beginning when the reader reaches this area. And of course you can set up a click event. If they tap on it, um, they can go to a website and you can um, also monitor and track these link clicks to show some data to your advertisers. And I think here at the very bottom, we have another YouTube video. So that's also a good option to add videos from a streaming service. The benefit is that if a user downloads an issue to his device, it will um, not add a lot to the file size, it will pretty much be nothing to additional download. But uh, do note that this will require um, internet connectivity while using it. Okay, and uh, that was it. So that was um, an example conversion of a full issue that we've been provided. And um, I hope what, what's important about this is just show the, the potential and the, the real difference between the responsive and absolute design. And in the end, I think what we learn a lot is it is also about efficiency and, and how much time it takes to create content. And if you were to imagine if you had to create two different versions for the same issue using a static design tool like InDesign, um, it would just take a lot of time. And in the end, you end up with two very specific device sizes, which might work fine on the iPhone 11 and iPad Air, 
Um, but consider that Android has many, many different device sizes that you wouldn't cover um, directly. So you would always have some um, blank space to the top, bottom, left or right. And using a, a responsive design will get rid of that. Okay, I hope this video was interesting and do let me know if you have any questions.